jealous when a neutron is zealous and adds to its atomic mass. Do galaxy probes test the cosmos' expansive quest, saying the space in between us is just too vast? Does the Earth take offense when lightning strikes intense and sends its charge to the ground? Do our thoughts of our gender confuse our defender and create sight to become envious of sound? Did your yin and your yang start off with a bang, creating a universe within your own soul? Can you let go of that sin, look to the child within, and allow yourself to become whole? Will we finally take heed and really succeed, and have the genders within us be healed? The goddess, the god, no longer at odds. Go inside and adjust your fate seal. For the goddess gestation will continue creation, as the god remains eternally erect. To fathom salvation is to raise your vibration, and to each polarity accord due respect. Oh. Oh, I'm so, you know what this talks about? <laughs> yeah. Electricity. Yes. Yeah. Chemistry. About Chemistry. toasters. Like <laughs> the toasters. I have a fan on today, so. Oh. Oh, thank you. So, I started this playful and silly because I wanted to talk about energy, because it's all energy, all we are is energy. But really, in life, in science, in, in, in physics, in all the molecules that ever exist and always will exist because they're just continuing, continuing, continuing. Do you ever see them argue? Do you ever see them argue? Have you ever seen elements argue? Have you ever seen electricity be mad at the positive or negative charge that each one of them have? Does the earth be offended when lightning strikes the ground? It's all about energy, folks. And I'm always talking about energy in one way, shape, or form. Now, if you're with us in today's meditation, you'll see that I did an inner male, inner female meditation, the God, the Goddess Within. And that is what this talk is really about. We have a wonderful song that's going to be sung by Mike and Julie today that's going to bring that together. And this is kind of that same sacred sexuality talk all at the same time. Because all we are is energy. This is about polarity. This is about the yin and yang of us. This is about walking in this earth body knowing that within you is everything. Within and without is everything. There's positive and negative charges everywhere we go in the universe. Every single day you're being bombarded with positively and negatively charged particles. You don't see them. Some of them you do. We are in a physical universe. But as we, took, as we look and talk with each other, the battle of the sexes, See, Scott and I are in this men's group, and call, along with a few other men here. My contention, my whole mission when it comes to men's work, is that we have been in a patriarchal society pretty much since the dawn of time. There have been some cultures that have had matriarchal type societies. Matter of fact, I just was saying on the internet the other day, there was this whole town with all women, and they were just now going to start allowing some men in. I wish I remembered what the name of the town was, because I had already written this talk. Uh, I think it's, I think it's, golly, I can't, I'll get my brain back later, but throughout history, there's been a couple of villages, tribes, civilizations that were matriarchal, but predominantly, we've been in a patriarchal society. My contention, my belief, my opinion, is that that is an error. That we are in error about that. That somewhere along the line, long, 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 long time ago, we mistook the differences between the physicality and somewhere along the way, women started being dominated by men. And, and men started being dominated by women in a different way. 
We started this battle of the sexes. We started bringing our brawn and dominating women with it. And because of that, we have been out of balance as a people since that time. There's no right or wrong about this. This is about balance. This is about universal balance. This is about getting the cells within you to be getting along with each other, just like molecules get along. Now, have you ever seen two people that you thought, wow, they don't belong together? And when they do come together, they're like really volatile. Their personalities really clash. They become explosive. Nothing wrong with their energy, it's just their isotopes. It's just like atomic fusion. Certain times, certain, certain isotopes, when they come together, the energy released is, well, that's where nuclear energy comes from. But when it comes to us, we don't have to have an explosion. We could just simply be present with ourselves and realize that we're repelling from that person. Because in life and in, in energy world, in the 3D world, there's things repelling each other all the time, but they're not at war to do it. They just simply are obeying the laws of physics and of metaphysics. So things are going to attract and things are going to repel. That's how positive and negative charge works. But when it comes to within us, we seem to have waged a war with our own energy. Everyone, everyone here currently living with electricity in their home? Cool. If you wanted to live an Amish lifestyle, who might I judge? And sometimes, like we talked about last week, if you time out, maybe they'll turn your electricity off. But that's irrelevant. <laughs> Most of us are familiar with electricity, and we're familiar with the appliances in our, in our lives. We're familiar with what we call the receptacle on the wall and the plug of the appliance. So there's a male end and there's a female end, always. There's always that. Is anybody jealous of that? Do you think the wall is jealous of the toaster plug? Do you think... The wall has just had enough of being plugged into. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. I wish I would have wrote that one. Yeah, exactly. It's just energy. It's <laughs> okay, I gotta keep some composure up here, guy. <laughs> but yeah, it is. It's 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 a relationship that is necessary if we want the circuit to be completed. Because that's all we're really doing when we plug that into the receptacle, we're completing the circuit. And then we turn the on switch on, which really completes the circuit, because that circuit wasn't complete until I slid that switch over. And now that circuit is completed, and all I'm doing is running electrical current. Oh, spirit, earth, me, I'm a wire. That's all we are. And what I do is I allow electrical current, energy, light, photons, to run through me at any given point. But I came in a male suit this time, so I have a polarity that's positive. Or do I? Because within this male is a woman, and there's a child. Matter of fact, there's two of them. Because if I'm a man and I have a half side, if I have a balanced inner female, if I have a yin and a yang, that means both of me have an inner child. So within me, there's a whole family of people. And that's just the immediate family. Then we go out to the townspeople and the village and the cities and the countries and we know how many people are really within us. But let's just, let's just go with this core family. The inner male, the inner female, and the two little kids inside. And if you were with me in meditation, we kind of did a little bit of a meeting of them. Uh, walked into the temple, just had a little bit of a visualization because some people have never even met their inner male and inner female. Some people, to them, to them it's a foreign concept. But it's about energy, it's about electricity, it's about polarity, it's, it's about black and white. It's about yin and yang. It's about everything that is going on all the time. We don't always see the different dances with energy. Sometimes we feel it. Sometimes you walk into a room and, and you were with a couple that just had an argument and you walked into that space and you're like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> There's all kinds of energy going on in that room. But a lot of it is back to here. 
it's always an inside job. When I look within me and realize that within this man has got to be a woman, I can get off all my male ego stuff. Now, a lot of this can say is probably easier for women to be receptive of their masculine side than it has been for men to be receptive of their feminine side, because somewhere along the line, men's lizard brains mistook <laughs> polarity for sexuality. It's got nothing to do with each other. They come into play in our sexuality. I mean, I am in a man's body and I'm attracted to the female bodies, but what if I were gay? I'm still in a man's body. If I'm attracted to the male polarity, that means something on me on the inside is switched to polarities. That means my polarity on the inside had changed when I came into this earth walk physically. But within that same person is both. There's still an inner male and an inner female, and on my right-hand side, and this is predominantly in energies, the male is, is on the right side and the female is on the left side, and they must have known this since the dawn of time, because look at the top of every wedding cake. Look at where a man stands and where a woman stands, traditionally. The man is on the right, the bride is on the left. That is the tradition of it, because we have known energy innately. But on this man's side over here, just all man and tough and rough and, no, mm-mm. There's a woman, there's a woman, there's a female, there's both. On the right side is a male and a woman. On the left side is a woman and a man. Predominantly feminine on this side, but there's aspects of masculinity in feminine. It's like, I would, matter of fact, back up real now before I say this. Would any of us really dare to tell a woman that they can't achieve what a man can do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Walking>. <laughs> So, because I have known many friends that have not wanted to hire women because they're too emotional. I didn't say it. I've hired plenty of women. <laughs> Matter of fact. Hired. Because they're too emotional. And I'm like, mm, most of the women, most of the people I've had as bosses were women. Most of the people that have been in positions of district manager or manager over me in my career have been women. One or two have been men, and I've had to deal with the nuances of both when they're stuck in that polarity only. If I'm stuck in all male or stuck in all female, I'm still going to be out of balance. It's like, how come some men are super masculine, some men are effeminate, some women are effeminate, and some women are masculine? It's just the energy within them. It's just our personality. It's just who we are. There's no right or wrong to this. There's no right or wrong to any of the energies within us. But, uh, Sometimes we get confused. Uh, I wrote this line here, is, does the earth take offense when lightning strikes and tense, intense and sends its charge to the ground? It's really more about this next line. Do our thoughts of our gender confuse our defender and create sight to become envious of sound? And we have a lawyer here, because that's what I mean by the defender, that inner lawyer, that inner person that's always litigating for our, for our cause to prove us right, to make sure that we're seen in this world as right. And the inner male is gonna litigate for maleness. And the inner female is gonna litigate for femaleness. And sometimes there's confusion in that because they're litigating against each other a battle that no one's really fighting. No one's suing anybody. No one wronged anybody. There's no, one, there's no reason to go to court. There's no offense, there's no need for a lawyer. Yes, yes, because Sometimes, instead of a lawyer, what do we have? We have a mediator. And that's one of the biggest gifts that our inner child does, is it mediates between the man and the woman because all they are is pure innocence, wonder, and light. They're not stuck in their heads, they're not stuck in drama, they're not stuck in intellect, they're living in the moment and they're living in pure energy. And they know the truth of energy. When we have a battle with our inner female and male, we are wasting our energy. <coughs> We're, we're in, actually in a lie. I've been reading this book called The Monday Night Group. And it's making me say dig it a lot because it was written back in the 60s. <laughs> and that's all the guy says, can you dig it? And things like that, and groovy. And I'm like, well, I'm pretty down with that anyway. So, <laughs> But it's, it's more about where we waste our energies, even in our own selves, lying to the own male and female within, within us. 
are you confusing your own self so much that your your sight is becoming envious of your own sound? That the things in your life that you visualize are becoming envious of the things in, in your life that you can hear? Because when we pit, pit sight against sound, which is a ridiculous notion, it's just as ridiculous to pit the man against the woman inside because you're the same thing. It's like you are the woman, you are the man. I am the man, I am the woman, you are the man, you are the woman. I don't care what gender spacesuit you're in. It doesn't matter. Your spacesuit is just a reflection of the polarity you would like the world to see first. That's all. Everything within you, well, there's all kinds of polarities within you. If there's a whole village within you, what the hell am I saying? If there's a whole village within you, what if only one of them is gay and doesn't act it out in your life? But you have that notion. You have that polarity, you have that feeling, but it didn't manifest itself in a physical wanting so that you didn't actually go interact with same sex or things like that. But inside you have that person Everybody's got everybody in. When I first, if Marge was here, she'd be cracking up at this next one. When I first started metaphysics, when I did my first workshop, workshop called the Emergence, uh, there were very airy fairy people from California, and they were all talking about love and light and energy. But they were they were telling me that everybody was gay. What? I don't feel gay. <laughs> and they said, well, everybody's bi, and I'm like. Energetically, I get it. Physically, I don't necessarily agree. Because energetically, yes, we're all bisexual. Uh, we've, we've had this talk before, if you're in a dark room and, and it's sensual and you, they open the light and then you see it's a same-sex person, what did that mean? It meant that you liked the sensual touch, that's all. But it also meant energetically, you were feeling the polarity of that person. And if that person was a gay male, you were probably feeling feminine energy. So that doesn't mean that you yourself were seeking the, po the opposite polarity or the same polarity of you. It just meant you recognize energy. Once you turn the light on, now your intellect gets in the way and goes, oh, with all the rhetoric of man, woman, woman, man, that, that line right there, did, where did it go? Uh, dude, it's also for gender confuser defender. And makes you question your own sexuality. If you're questioning your own sexuality, I would tell you that you probably got some polarities going on to take a look at because our sexuality is something that's in us. It's grounded. It's, it's centered. It's who you are. It's part of who you are in this creation. I learned that at 20 years old when I watched a documentary that it had nothing to do with hit choices. It had to do with your physiology, your energy. Well, I could be a total heterosexual person, male or female, and still have feminine and masculine qualities I've met men that were heterosexual men that were very feminine. I've met women that were very heterosexual women that were very masculine, very out there, very go-get. We're gonna cut that tree down and let everybody else bring the wood back to the camp. <laughs> and we're allowed to have those roles because unfortunately we've been cast into roles that I'm bigger and I'm stronger, so I'll do the big and strong work and you're weaker, so you do the weaker work. Go pick the berries. Well, you know what? I've met some women that can kick my butt. I've once met some women that can out bench press me. I've met some women that can outrun me. I have met women that are taller and stronger than me. And I've also seen men that were a lot weaker and smaller than their female counterparts. It doesn't matter. That's got nothing to do with energy. That didn't make that man any less masculine or that woman any less Feminine. There was a, a, a new show called Game of Thrones. I don't know if some of you are watching it. And, and one of the women in, in there is like humongous. She's really yeah. tall. And she's a knight. But she's beautiful. She's beautiful, man. I'm telling you, you can see the femininity coming out of her eyes. It's got nothing to do with her brawn. She's able to take both roles and wear a suit of armor and kick your butt and then turn around and just look right in the softness of her eyes. That's what balance is about, guys. It's just owning the energies within us and knowing that we're all, we're everything. Choose who you want to be with in your physical world. I did a poem about that recently, and I'm going to actually put that poem on the back of our flyers and bring them to the gay bars so that they know that they're welcome here, that they're not tolerated, that they're wanted and welcome as a human being to come and celebrate with us because we want to celebrate. 
but that it's, in the poem is called a blessing to love free, because who the hell am I to tell you who to love? Or who am I to tell me who to love in here? See, when Steph and I first broke up and she first told me the news, man, the guy inside of me felt like he failed. I felt like the husband within me sucked, that he did it wrong, that I owed an apology to the inner female within me. And I was actually on the phone with Nina, your sister, but she knows it's her sister. <laughs> I had to say, I'll get my brain back after the talk. And we're just chatting and she called me out on something to just have me take a look in because I was going too fast. I process really fast sometimes. And sometimes I'll process faster than my own self would like. <coughs> and I was sitting there thinking that the man owed the woman an apology. And I was really feeling guilty that I failed my marriage. And I didn't do anything wrong. And there was no failure. This is just crap thoughts. And before I can get the male over to the left side, so to speak, to go apologize to the woman, the woman came over to me the male side and just embraced me and held me and I lost it and it was a very powerful moment in me because I realized I did not do anything wrong except not allow her back over into my world sometimes the odds that we are at is the odds we're at with our own selves and it's having this communication between that male and that female and just allowing it just knowing that the the dogmas the rules, the notions that we have had about men and women are baloney, they're lies, they're lies. They are a lie, and a lie is a waste of energy and it has wasted the energy of the humans on the planet for a long, 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 long time. Now, thank goodness that long, 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 long time is only really a blink of an eye in existence. We just got here. If you've been looking at that movie or that show, The Cosmos, with Neil deGrasse Tyson, he does a little calendar of the year, and it basically says that humans only showed up in December anyway, matter of fact, halfway through the month, when you look at the whole big cosmic journey we've been on. So we've only been here a little bit, and that's that, that's that moment for us to breathe. But some of the dogma that we've had has been, uh, well, men don't cry, right? You'd be a baby, you'd be a wimp, you'd be a pansy. Why well, like flowers? <laughs> it's like I, I never understood that one. It smells good. It's pretty. You wear cologne, don't you? It's made out of flowers. Ha <laughs> ha, panty. <laughs> Why are we adorning ourselves with perfumes as men? Is that a feminine quality? Yeah. That guy, that part of us is a guy that wants to groom and put cologne on and all that. Is that a masculine quality? Because quite frankly, I don't care. If we left it all up to the devices of my man, the man inside, I would be hairier than I even am. I would never trim, my ears would look like Scott's. <laughs> That's okay, Carl's gonna get me because they're starting to anyway. But it's also that some of the rules of, well, women can't get angry. Well, they may feel it, but you better not express it. Because then we're going to label you with that B word. I want to take that word out of the vocabulary. Because women are allowed to complain just as much as men. It doesn't make you that. It doesn't turn you into that. But does that mean women can't be CEOs? Women can't, well... I mean, you shouldn't get half as much pay, right? <laughs> Put this back in front of me. <laughs> exactly. So we're 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 popping the dime. We're dropping the dime and popping the bubbles of a lot of lies that have been told to us historically. Men do cry. Whenever you hear somebody say to a little boy, "Be a man," get in your face, lovingly. Or not, but no, lovingly. I'm teasing, lovingly. Because men cry, and so do boys, and so do girls, and when you're sad, you cry, and when you get a boo-boo, you cry, and when you're scared, you cry, and that's what little kids do. We're trying to make little kids into adults, and all we're doing is giving them, you know, a therapy appointment later in life. Really. So it's just being, being gentle with ourselves. Uh, 
I wrote notes on for myself this, this time. I wrote something up. Did you yin and your yang start off with a bang, creating a universe with your own soul? Can you let go of that sin and look to the child within? The very first lie we were ever told. We did. We talked about this recently, about that original sin and how we were lied to before we ever even started really understanding language. We we're told we were sinners. We we're told that we were wrong for even being in our bodies. And then as little kids, we were shamed if we even touched ourselves in a way, exploration even. It's like it's all energy, and sexual energy is part of what created the universe. The very last line, for the goddess gestation will continue creation as the god remains eternally erect. Yeah, guys, that's about sexuality. That's about the innie and the outie. That's about without that, no one is going anywhere forward when it comes to humankind. Crickets and other critters may continue because they don't fight with each other over their polarity. Now, there's some species that eat them out, so we'll stay away from spiders. But there's a, there's a lesson in that for us, too. But in general, the polarities in nature don't fight. Now, there's all that survival of the fittest, and we can watch the Discovery Channel, and we can look at it as this really violent thing in nature. And it's really just a continuum of energy and, and a circle of life, and we all know that. But when it comes to the actual energies and polarities, nature doesn't fight with itself. It just is what it is. So we just are what we are. Now, can you take that original sin, cast it out, and then go within? Go within and look at the child. Go within and look at the children. We have already all heard inner child, inner child, inner child. But have you ever heard it this way? Have you ever heard that you had two of them? That by virtue of the fact that you're an inner male and an inner female, you have to have those kids? Well, these kids are the essence of who you are. They're the love, the greatest energy in the world in the universe. Remember, folks, this is always going to be about love. What do we have if we don't have love? I can talk up here and talk all about science all day long, and polarities, and yins, and yangs, and all for naught if we're not remembering that it's just about love. That the, ba the balance that we want within is a balance of loving each other, of loving our inner selves, of loving the children, of loving the man, of loving the women, of knowing that they're all great the way they are. No one did anybody wrong. Nobody's fouled out. But we do have to heal this. We do have to finally take heed to really succeed and have our genders within us be healed. So the goddess, the god no longer at odds can go inside and adjust their fate's seal. See, we think our, 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 our fate has been sealed with the roles of men and women in this society because we've seen it for so long because we're just silly little humans with the silly little linear brains and sometimes we just pay attention to history and it seems like so long ago. When did women get the vote? 1920s? 1920. So what is that, 100, almost 100 years ago? Nothing, nothing, that's nothing in time. That's, it's not even a full blank. If you look at the time span of, we just got here in December. So, as we, both men and women, go through these things, I ask that we also remember to breathe into this and that we're all new at this. And that we're new on this planet. We're just little babies walking around learning this. We're all still in preschool, elementary, whether we're masters that have been on the planet a bazillion times. Earth is school but you're allowed to have a recess and play. You're allowed to play with the children and have fun with the children and make sure that you know every day is a key to play. Every day is important to go inside that little kid and that little boy, that little girl and that little boy and, and let, they know how to get along. When you look at little boys and little girls, and I mean before any intellect comes in, just toddler, you can see the nuances of the energetic differences between boy and girl Unless you started programming them with certain color clothes and certain kind of toys, because we do that, we don't even realize we do it. Well, he's a boy, he gets a blue toy and a truck. And she's a girl, she gets a pink, pink toy and a dolly. And then, oh, no, 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 I don't play with that dolly. Give me that dolly. You'll grow up to be a pansy. Here, play with the truck. And then we confuse him about his own gender at two, because he was having fun with the dolly. 
There's no bias there. There's no prejudice. There's no judgment about who, whether I play with the doll or I play with the truck. If we let kids get real creative, they'll put the doll inside the truck and roll it right off of a cliff. <laughs> and then the other girl will have a little funeral with roses and flowers. <laughs> and then a little boy will kick the sand. <laughs> and that could be just one kid playing. Get them therapy later for the bipolarness, but when we bring it in balance, those bipolar things don't happen as much. Because I'm not making fun of bipolarness, I'm bipolar, we all are. When I focus, when I breathe, when I'm centered, those polarities don't bang me back and forth as much. And oh, by the way, just so you know, last night I was going, what the devil is wrong with me? I've been bouncing back and forth all week because I've been in this talk and I forgot about that energetically. And then last night as I was writing the meditation, things kind of came in. I was talking to Robin and she told me to eat some roots. And I did, I had a sweet potato and it helped ground me too. Because I was back and forth doing this talk because I've been on purpose with polarities. So I invite you to do that to help you ground. If you feel like you're out of whack with your inner meme, inner female, inner female, or inner male. Oh, I think you just named something. A new name. But go do things that will help that polarity. When I did have hair, it was long, it really was. And it was my female counterparts, my friends, that taught me how to brush my hair because the man was just kind of and you just that's probably why I'm bald now. But my girlfriends were going, oh, my, gentle. Take the brush, start down here, and then go a little higher, and then go a little higher, and then go a little higher. And you know what happened when I started brushing my hair the very first time like that? I, I'm gonna own now, I was very young, so this is what happened, but all of a sudden I felt gay. I was like, Whoa. My inner female came online stronger than I had ever felt that energy separate before because I went real slow and I listened and I listened and I'm like, okay, pay attention. But once I knew it had nothing to do with my sexuality, I was fine, I knew who I was, just playing mental games with myself and allowed that energy in more and more, I started to nurture myself more and more. I started to do things that brought that feminine energy out because the masculine energy is already predominant. It's already here. I don't have a problem with that one. I know how to work that one. I know how to walk in it. I know how to talk in it. I probably have backed off of it some because it scared me throughout my life, just the anger aspects of it. But when I brought that feminine in, it eased the pain of some of the craziness of the male side. And it's not crazy crazy. It's just energy spinning with nowhere to go. When I send it back to the left, you ever see an energy pattern of a figure eight infinity? That's exactly what happens energetically between the inner male and the inner female. It's constantly spinning the energy back and forth, back and forth. And the kids are in the middle just playing in it, just basking in it. But one where like, yeah, I'm not gonna talk to that part of myself. No. <laughs> that, that energy is hitting and just bouncing right here. And then the kids are a wreck. Mom and dad aren't talking. They need therapy later because they are coming from a broken family, and, and that's all within. All of the different things that happen are always going to be happening within, and those are always going to be the base players. The kids, the male, the <laughs> kids. One of the things that we do as men and women to each other we nitpick at each other. And this is all energy, right? We go nit, nit, nit. How does that sound? Nit. Is it annoying? Nit. Is it annoying yet? Nit. Yes, yeah, nit. Yeah, I want you guys. Yes, yes, you yes, guys yes. do it. I want ten seconds. Ten seconds only of you guys doing that. Please, I invite you. Go to nit, 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 nit. That's just ten seconds. Nit, 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 nit. Yeah. See? Breathe, folks. Because I want to end this day on a really positive note. So I will invite you to hold hands with the people that you can reach. If not, just be with yourself. And just go inside, close your eyes for a quick second. And together, let's just own for one minute. Not a whole minute, I mean like 20 seconds, okay? So. Oh.
How did that feel? Yeah, and that was that wasn't even twenty seconds. We spend more time doing the nit 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 stuff. And we do it to ourselves. So that nit 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 is happening back and forth in you. If you see it out loud with your counterparts, your friends, your female, male friends, or your lovers, your partners, realize that that's going on in you. Nit, 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 nit. Own for a second. It helps bring all of them back into balance. Now, there, by no way have I covered all the nuances of inner male and inner female and the energies within. This is a continuing onward journey. This is a continued onward discovery of those selves within. This is just the meeting point. This is the place where you now go inside and do the work that you need to do to bring your family back together. I'm going to talk about Thank you. Bless all the past.